Clytus, I'm bored. What plaything can you offer me today? An obscure body in the SK system, Your Majesty. The inhabitants refer to it as the Ron Perti Show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Romper T Show post show. Uh, you might as well call me the Chris Hardwick of podcasts at this point, except my ties are not very skinny. Uh, I'm still here with Steven, uh, and we're talking now a little bit about uh, weenie girlfriends, because you mentioned it before we went off the air that it was picked up by CBS in 2007? Yes, Okay. What ha- What happened with that? So, uh, yeah, I mean, so... Basically, what happened was uh, these two producers named Clark Peterson and Dennis Erdman had seen the show. At the time, we were being represented by a manager named Barry Blumberg. Uh, and so basically, Clark and Dennis worked with a producer named Darren Starr, who had most famously created Sex in the City. They'd seen the show uh, on, on, you know, on YouTube. They liked it. They wanted to talk to us about pitching it to Sony, where Darren had a deal. Uh, and through Sony, we pitched to all the networks, and CBS ended up buying it and uh, to turn into a sitcom. And that was kind of the start of it. <laughs> what happened? At, what happened after that? Then. Well, what happened after that was numerous, <laughs> numerous things. So, we were told, uh, "Hey, why don't you guys, uh, you know, uh, get writing on this?" We basically had to leave our jobs because you know writing was a full time job. And immediately afterwards, the, the, the writer strike happened. There was a oh. WPA strike uh, because of residuals, you know, related to, uh, to, to the shows being put on the Internet. Uh, and so that lasted for months. Uh, and then when we came back, we had written a script. We submitted it. They liked it. Then they decided, well, we don't want to do this as a single camera show. We want to do this as a How I Met Your Mother type hybrid uh you know multi-camera single camera right so then we rewrote that uh and then they decided well let's bring on uh some like veteran showrunners to kind of rewrite this so then they rewrote it (laughs) and uh basically it didn't really resemble our web series at all it became very cbs uh kind of that kind of you know homogenized sitcom comedy that that does very well for them but which was not our like little independent uh web series produced out of a apartment for 150 bucks uh it was just very different and so then they said hey it looks like this is going to go why don't you guys move out to los angeles for the pilot so we did and then (laughs) uh i think uh, a month or two later they put it on hold again oh geez uh, and then they wanted, so then they fired the showrunners or the showrunners left, something like that. They had us rewrite it with a new framing device where, uh, it's told from the point of view of like a webcam confessional, <sighs> like, uh, you know, like, um, the real world. Yeah. 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 Uh, or there was another show around that time. Oh, God, Road rules. Uh, yeah. Well, there was some, there was like a sitcom. God, what the hell was the name of it? Like twenty five ish or something. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, for whatever reason, now I'm blanking. But so they did that. That didn't work. Then they were going to bring on other showrunners, <sighs> uh, and we, you know, we're going to. And so then we were all set to meet the new showrunner that was being hired. And on that morning, we got a call saying, "Don't come. It's been canceled." And so that was that. So basically, you you have to uproot your life, move to Los Angeles. Now, were you yes. married? Were you married at the time, or no? No, no. Okay, so that wasn't it. Wasn't that that much of a of an upheaval then? Yeah, um, I mean, I was twenty six, twenty seven. So I didn't have much. I didn't have too much going on. Now, now, just this is you. Let's let's look at this from a, a, a purely. Um, uh, a writing standpoint when it comes to dealing with producers and stuff. Um, you, uh, during this whole thing, were you being paid? Cause I want, I want this, I want people who are like, who want to be writers and stuff like that to realize that you don't have to work within the system to get anywhere. 
anymore. Yeah, no. So, I mean, uh, no, well, we weren't. It, and that, that's what sucked. Uh, we were not getting paid. Uh, we didn't get paid until about like a, a almost a year, I think, after we wrote it. Uh, so, and we didn't get paid much because once you take out, um, obviously, taxes and manager's fees and agent's right. fees, you're not. And, and it was split three ways because we had three. The three of us were, were teaming up uh, to write it. Uh, it was not a lot of money. So selling out initially does not really involve too much money. Now, did this make you have Did they make you join the Writers Guild? They were. Yeah, they were. They told us we had to. But I but, you know, it was like a three or four hundred dollar sign up fee, which was an astronomical amount of money at that time for me. Uh, and so I said I was like, well, well, let's wait and see if it gets picked up. And so I never like, had to join, luckily. Oh, geez. That's because I know I talked to someone before. Uh, I talked to Morgan Peter Brown, and he was talking about how um, he told, you know, as a word of warning to everyone, don't join a guild unless you absolutely have to. Yep. I, I, I totally agree with that. And people were, are always like, oh, I want to be a member of the WG. It's like, yeah, but if you join up, uh, it's going to limit what you can do. Uh, and then not only that, but you're going, if there's a strike or something, if there goes on oh, any money you'd make writing. Yes. You know, you're pretty, you're pretty screwed. Uh, well, if, I, uh, yeah, I think a lot of people are under the misconception that once you get an agent or once you join a guild, that that's it, you know, they're, they're getting the work for you. And that's just not the case at all. It's, it's always on you to, to find the work. Right. And so, yeah, if you're starting out and something limits the jobs you can do, then, that's definitely a handicap. And then now, nowadays, I mean, it's, it's, you know, we had talked about this a little bit, but it seems like it's harder to get noticed because YouTube is so uh, saturated with content, good or yes. bad, regardless. Uh, yeah. Do you think that maybe like a move to Vimeo might be the way to go? Yeah, I mean, so, uh, so at that time when we had, when Weenie Girlfriends was kind of taking off, we were showing it on YouTube and showing it on MySpace, uh, which was still a, a, a big source of uh of independent videos and we were literally like in some of the first meetings for some of these digital companies like you know disney started a digital company and fox started a digital company and all this kind of stuff and they were they had no idea how to monetize it at that point and they were asking us hey like how do you guys think you can monetize this and we had no idea because we were just you know filmmakers we weren't business people amen uh, to that brother and so I think if, if we had, you know, if we had had the opportunity, if we could if we could see into the future, I think we would have just kept making it ourselves. Right. Uh, and not gone the sitcom route. Um, and we were we actually did after the CBS deal came through, we had an offer from MySpace to do it, uh, to do a season two of a web series. Um, and uh and instead, we decided, well, let's do the sitcom thing. That seems like the much bigger deal. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's – and it – yeah, as you were saying, it has definitely changed. I mean, it's so saturated. I, I, I don't know who any of these YouTube people are now. Yeah, I still watch um, people from back when I was – like, I still watch Red Letter Media and yeah. uh, and uh, um, and people that I've been watching for years. I don't think I've subscribed to somebody new in a long time. Yeah, I mean, it's a totally different landscape. And so, you know, uh, my friends and I were never, you know, Brian, uh, Amy, and Angel Acevedo, who I made Weenie Girlfriends with, we were never the kind of people who wanted to be like on camera or, you know, ask, you know, you know, these kind of video blogs that people do. Right. We had no interest in that. We wanted to make sitcoms, basically. Right. And that takes time. That takes a crew that takes actors. And, and so we couldn't produce stuff at the rate that that kind of these independent uh, video sites wanted stuff produced. Yeah. You got to kind of take your time with that kind of, and that's another thing is like people um, think that, Oh, you're just making a comedy. It's just, you know, put, turn the camera on and be funny. No, yeah. it's, it's the same thing with horror. It there takes it's timing. And uh, that's why I, I think, and I don't know if you'll agree or not, but uh, horror and comedy are really connected. Definitely. Yeah. And, and, you know, some of my same friends, uh, I, I, I have a lot of friends in that kind of horror filmmaker world and, 
yeah, it's 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 pretty similar. Oh yeah, like you gotta. It's it's hard to explain. You just gotta experience. Uh, I, I pretty much what uh, what what's going on there. But uh, mm-hmm. that's that's just that. And and I I don't mean to to make it sound like I'm I'm diminishing what you went through with CBS, but that's kind of like a word to the wise. Uh, yeah, well, you know. You know, it's the the thing that's crazy about it is you know you keep climbing up that those rungs a little bit right and then when they say we're not going to shoot your pilot it's like you're back down at the bottom again yeah and climbing up that ladder again is tough yeah it's like you could and 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 you could have just kept putting out things on your own yeah and not have to worry about the the muckety mucks with their with their fat suits and their fatter cigars and their lack of creativity, and that's another thing. I'm sure a lot of the executives you didn't, they didn't know, didn't know a joke from uh, a punch in the face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing was, we were we were uh, so low on that ladder that it was, you know, you had your your producers, then you had the company, the production company's producers, then you had like kind of the uh, the production companies overseeing boss producers and then you had the networks producers so by the time your script got to the network it had gone through i think i had over a hundred versions of that script on my computer before it even got to cbs right yeah that's just now okay one last question before I'll... and i'll let you go here real quick sure. um when it comes to when, when you when cbs picks a show up Mm-hmm. And they said we're going to bring experienced showrunners to to uh, rewrite the script and kind of take over things. At what? Where did they have you in in the hierarchy? If were you just like were you just uh, uh, you know like uh, staff writers at that point? Then yeah, we were. So we were contractually obligated to be, I think, uh, supervising producers on the show for the first two seasons. Uh, and that was it. <laughs> and my, you know, at the time I was young and, and very green and I, I, you know, we had no friends who had done this. Uh, none of us came from families where anyone worked in television or film. Right. And now I realize, like, you know, they would have had us on there in our little role as supervising producer for the first couple seasons. And then they would have just let us go. <sighs> Jeez. That's most likely how it would have gone. You know, these major networks don't really keep around these like, guys like us who came from the internet. <laughs> so that's most likely what I believe would have happened. It came from the internet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like a bad fifty sci-fi B movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they were, you know, they were clueless as to how this worked, and and no one had really uh, kind of produced a web series that you know, kind of gained the interest of a network. And so they were, they like, you know, the CBS was as new to it as we were uh, when it came to that. And now they, now they have all access. Yeah. Yeah. Should I subscribe to that? Is that good? I have no idea. I, I, I don't subscribe to it at all. I do subscribe to the DC app though. That new one. Oh yeah. And that's, that that's amazing. There's so many old comics on there, um, oh, nice. and they have a lot of old movies and stuff. They have a. This is something you might be interested in. They have the uh, Legends of the Superheroes. Oh my god, I have that on VHS. Yeah, they have that on there, and I, I haven't watched it yet. But like the Titans show is awesome. Um, uh, that, young, that's the thing that interests me. Yeah, Young Justice's third season is there. Um, what else is coming up? Uh, uh, oh, in uh, February is Doom Patrol. And if the Doom Patrol yes. episode of Titans was any indication of how the show is going to be, it's going to be amazing. Oh, nice. Uh, and then uh, in May is Swamp Thing live action. That sounds awesome. I still watch the old Swamp Thing show. Yeah, it's uh, it's produced by James Wan. And okay. uh, uh, Derek Mears is playing uh, Swamp Thing. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's going to be... So Jason as Swamp, as Swamp Thing. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so That's great. Swampy with a machete. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank you so much for being on, Stephen, and you're welcome back anytime you want to you want to talk about stuff going on. Um, and uh, thank you, you people, for listening to the first post show episode. I guess I don't know. Uh, talking Ron, we'll call we'll talk Talking Ron. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, so don't forget to head over to Ron World for all the information. Head over to Twitter and follow Stephen Staples eighty one. 
And uh, I want to thank everybody for listening. I want to thank my guest, Stephen. And uh, this has been a lot of fun. Great. Thank you so much, Ron. This was great. All right. Well, we'll have to have you back soon. Uh, That sounds great. I'm in.